I guess I'll just sit here. Or you could sit right here next to this. There you go. <laughs> Yes, I have. That's how we're starting the show, back up. Woo! Yeah! Oh. Get in there! God damn! Alright, everybody stop enjoying each other's company and listen to me, because I really I suffer from attention deficit disorder. <laughs> what? Stay there. Stand here, where yes. I am? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Can everyone, can everyone see me? This is too sexy for you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, this is great. Thank you all for being inside of my house. This, yes. is, yeah. this is like the first night of my life where I've not been just despicably lonely. Oh. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing I'm doing this. This, this next play is very serious. This next play is very serious. It's called Soapbox. It's over there. It has a little uh, copyright symbol next to it. Trademark. Tra it, it's a C. That it, stands for copyright. You changed it. It's TM. Jerks! You I made that! That was my art. Have you guys ever been to Soapbox? It's a really good soup Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, look. The writer is David Wexler. And the director is Surabi Kanga. And it stars the lovely Laurel Folia. volunteers from the audience and um me me you just need to come up here i'm going to tell you what to do we just have to go up there read something and i'm going to tell you when to go when to come out it's totally cool you can raise your hands now no no sorry that guy over there that lady over there i don't get enough stage time and It's this 
new app called Soapbox. <laughs> so it's, it's like the anti-Twitter. You post things and they have to be long. Like, a <laughs> minimum of 2,000 words. <laughs> and it's all locational. So the posts that you read are all from people within 40 feet of you. <laughs> like, about the distance that they would be if they were actually standing on a soapbox and you could hear them yelling. <laughs> Dead serious. <laughs> right now is a totally racist person. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I didn't, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not surprised. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and another one, some lady really fucking loves her KitchenAid mixer. <laughs> really loves it. about how crazy people are, like... I mean, that's kind of the point, okay? So, like... So, we don't know each other. I mean, we know each other, sorry. We know each other, but we don't really know each other. Like, we think we know each other, but on the inside, we're all kind of a little nutty. So, okay, you open up the app, and all you can do is post a rant or a manifesto. So let me, I found this article <laughs> from the... the, the the developer. The developer. So, okay, he says, It's the true self. With 2,000 words, you can't keep up the appearance of being clever, or reasonable, or funny, or interesting. <laughs> Everything that you can do with 140 characters, you can't do here. You just have to keep writing until you're past all of that. You can't hide behind brevity. So, you can't link to pictures, you can't post pictures, it's just you reading words that go on forever on your tiny little phone, <laughs> which means that now I spend way too long on the train just like for hours seeing who pops up. <laughs> well, okay, so, so 40 feet away, if mm -hmm. they leave that, what, the they disappear. disappears? They just totally disappear. Okay, so <clears throat> they're called boxers. <laughs> um, and you gotta, you gotta catch your boxers quick. Like, for example, Kitchen Lady, Kitchen Aid, gone. Like, she's gone. She's gone. <laughs> God damn. Okay, so boxers, rants, <laughs> yeah. manifestos. I mean, I, I don't even like saying tweet. Okay, just, just read this one. Just read that. It was after he heard about Wells' War of the Worlds radio broadcast that the widespread panic it caused that Joseph Stalin got the idea to crash an alien spaceship into the United States. <laughs> what he didn't know was that his democracy crumbling hoax had already been pre-hoaxed. There was no widespread panic among the people from the War of the Worlds. It was a media hoax of a kind. More of a media echo chamber, where a couple stories got picked up and repeated and amplified. In truth, there are zero credible reports about of people throwing themselves out of windows or panicking in the streets from the broadcast, but unlike today where the lifespan of a media hoax can only last a couple hours from inception <laughs> to spreading to debunking, the media reports never got any serious scrutiny until the story had already reached the status of folk legend which is still told and believed today. <laughs> Obviously, Stalin had no idea of this at the time. Anyway, and believing that the presence of an alien spacecraft would lead to American panic, and made plans with infamous Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele to surgery alter orphan children to what is now recognized as a classic gray shape. <laughs> Put them into a rocket, designed them to look like a saucer, and crash them onto American soil. The crash, of course, occurred at Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, it was the sad death of these orphan children that spawned the conspiracies by the Gone. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, what, did what did it say? Uh, it was about Stalin crashing UFOs. Stalin UFO. I know that one. <laughs> I actually think it's kind of a credible theory. 
<laughs> what, what do you mean you've read that one? Well, so there's not that many of us, I mean, people posting, so you kind of get repeat ranters, which it's good if you haven't finished the whole thing the first time, right? They should really make it so you can actually finish the, the whole thing once you've started. That is like the most requested update. <laughs> I read this thing that they're going to make something about it will stay on your phone for like 15 minutes. What are you looking up? Oh, what do you think? I'm downloading it. <laughs> Did you want to finish that story about Greg oh, in the bathroom? What story? <laughs> Greg in the bathroom with the garbage. Oh, oh right. That, that, that's not that exciting. Um, I, I came home and, um, uh, okay, it's done downloading. Um, do I need a, an account or something? Only if you want to post something. So you came home. Uh, right, w where was I? Greg, bathroom, garbage. Oh, right, so, so I looked in the, the bathroom. not gross story about Greg in the bathroom. Uh, right, garbage. right, it's, it's not gross. Uh, so, I go in the bathroom and I look in the garbage and, um, I see a bag. A bag. Well, well, an empty bag. An empty um, bag. Oh, you love this app. Oh, God, listen to this one. <laughs> it wasn't long after the MRI that I got a call from this doctor. A couple doctors, all on the speakerphone, jabbering excitedly. They sound impressed. Incredible scarring, they said. All internal. Liver, lungs, heart, muscles, kidneys, bone, even. I've since seen pictures of the MRI. I suppose it is pretty impressive. They wanted me to come in immediately. Something horrible must be going on, they said. I, I could have told them what was going on. I could have told them I knew exactly how my body scarred itself. <laughs> it's just busy. Busy like a hive, like an anthill that can't get anything done without constantly tracking through itself, shaping tunnels and carving paths. It's actively creating itself. Sometimes the pain is unbearable. Sometimes it's almost pleasant. Sometimes I disappear into it, tracking them until they fade. Sometimes I can feel one heals, another traces over it. They're working together to complete something, but they're constantly breaking it down. So I, I can't even finish this. I mean, that poor person, that's so sad. I mean, do you see anyone around here who looks like they're in incredible pain? Yeah, sounds awful. But I kind of prefer the crazy ones. I mean, some of them are totally educational. Like, listen to this one. We distinguish between two kinds of technology, which we will call small-scale technology and organization-dependent technology. Small-scale technology is technology that can be used by small-scale communities without outside assistance. Organization-dependent technology is technology that depends on large-scale social organization. We are aware of no significant cases of regression in small-scale technology. But organization-dependent technology does regress when the social organization on which it depends breaks down. Example, when the Roman Empire <clears throat> fell apart, the Roman small-scale technology survived because any clever village craftsman could build, for instance, a water wheel. Any skilled smith could make steel by Roman methods, and so forth. But the Romans' organization-dependent technology did regress. Their aqueducts fell into disrepair and were never rebuilt. Their techniques of road construction were lost. The Roman system... Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's part of the Unabomber Manifesto. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't just cut and paste someone else's manifesto. Who is this? <laughs> Cabin in Montana? That's plagiarism. I'm going to report him. Uh, oh, no. Uh, I mean, a lot of these are really... I mean, look at this guy. Jazz Ate My Pizza is the title. I mean, I mean what the fuck does that even mean? Um, or here's one. Red Fox and the Phases of the Moon versus Sanford and Sons. <laughs> That's Sons. S-U-N-S. -S. <laughs> I mean, this, this app is completely populated by crazy people. Whatever, I think it's fun. I like the crazies, I said that. I mean... Did you want to finish that story about Greg? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so... So I go home. 
I go in the bathroom. I look in the bathroom garbage. Yeah. And there's an entire empty bag. Yeah. Of frozen Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. In the garbage. In the garbage. In the bathroom. In the bathroom. In the bathroom garbage. In the bathroom garbage. So. So. Why would he have had Brussels sprouts in the bathroom? I mean, I mean, he's not cooking them in there. <laughs> No pot in the kitchen. No pot in the bathroom. No pot in the bathroom. No pot. No pot. <laughs> Weird. Oh, didn't you, didn't you say that you're not feeling?